It's good to see everybody this evening. You glad to see me? <laughs> well, I'm glad to see y'all. Uh, James, everybody's asked about why James is not here. His brother-in-law had to have some surgery. Uh, he was supposed to have it at a certain time or a certain day, and they changed it so he had to be with them today. Uh, it's Donnie's, I mean, uh, Tommy's brother that uh, lives down the lake, brother down the lake, into the lake there with him, so that's why he's not here. Tommy's going to fill in for him tonight. <clears throat> so again, we will have a real different preacher. <laughs> not a real, just a real different. I want to remind everybody about the uh, uh, directory that uh, Linda has done. Uh, if you have information you want in it or want something, whatever, put in it. Uh, there's a notebook at the front door up here on the desk. You can put your information in there and she'll transfer it over to this. Uh, as far as announcements, I don't know of anything else. Uh, you know, some, uh, several people asked about Tina. She's still, she's getting better. <laughs> it's just taking a while. And uh, she'll, she'll be back one of these days. <laughs> Good deal. Yeah, I noticed Donnie and Travis are not here tonight, are they? They're gone. They're gone, okay. All right. Now, we have several people that in one place is uh, David and his bunch went somewhere out. Uh, Fort Worth. Huh? Fort, Fort, Fort Worth. Worth. Yeah, I couldn't remember. It was on the, my wife got a message on it. So we uh, pray tribal mercy for them. To make, they made it there safe and sound. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. For Perry, for my granddaughter Alexis, she's got bronchitis and she cannot get her medication. But she's having trouble getting it because of the all of this big work that she has to go through to get it. Okay. Typical California. Pardon me. Typical California. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's why we live in Dixie. That's why we live in Dixie. Typical California. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I need prayer. Okay. I knew the other day, whenever, I guess it was last Sunday he was at church, and he sure didn't look like he felt good. He, he looked the old Pepe Rodney that I used to know. He sure looked like he was feeling bad. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he said thanks for me. He found out. Anybody else? Good Lord prayer. Lord, uh, we thank you for the privilege of being here today. Lord, it's uh, been kind of a rough day around my house. Uh, you know what, what the problems are there, and I ask that you sit in there and try to help us out. Uh, we're looking forward to celebrating the Thanksgiving. Uh, celebration that we have every year. We hope things will get better. Lord, I uh, thank you for the privilege of being here to speak to the church tonight, speak to the congregation. Lord, we have some people put on the prayer list, and uh, we have some people that we didn't specifically put on this prayer list, but that are on our prayer list on a regular basis. Lord, we ask that you be with them and guide them. And uh, especially those who are having medical conditions, we ask that you guide their caregivers. And we ask that you guide the physicians and medical personnel to take care of them. Lord, I particularly ask that you bless the caregivers for the people that are having to do that. It is a rough job and uh, takes much patience and kindness to do that. Lord, I ask that you be with the people that do that. 
Lord, I thank you for the uh, blessings you've placed upon our church. Uh, we've been well blessed both spiritually and monetarily, and we uh, cannot thank you enough for that. Lord, I ask that you be with Brother Tony tonight in his uh, message to us. We hear the words that you wish for us to hear through him. Again, I thank you for the privileges you placed on the church. I ask that you continue that. Be with us through the rest of this evening and the rest of this day. Lord, ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Here. 
And this is a home grab. Really small if I put it. Thank you. First Timothy 4, verse 8. Where athletic training only benefits you for a short season. But righteousness brings lasting benefit in everything. For righteousness contains the promise of life for time and eternity. Faithful is the word everyone should accept it. For the sake of this ministry, we toil tirelessly and are criticized continually. Wow, that was written over 2,000 years ago. Look what's happening today. For the sake of the ministry, we toil tirelessly and are criticized continually. Simply because our hope is in the living God. I don't have an amen right there. He is a wonderful life giver of all the children of men and even more so to those who believe. Instruct and teach the people all that I'm talking. And don't be intimidated by those who are older than you. Simply be the example they need to see by being faithful and true in all that you do. Speak the truth and live a life of purity and authentic love as you remain strong in your faith. So until I come, be diligent in devouring the word of God. That's interesting. I thought that was interesting. Be diligent in devouring the word of God. I meditate on that for a minute. It says going after to get all you can get, to consume it in such a way that, that, that you're not satisfied. You want more and more. Be faithful in prayer and in teaching the believers. Don't minimize the powerful gift that operates in your life. For it was imparted to you by the laying on of hands of elders and was activated through the prophecy we spoke over you. Make all of your constant meditation and make it real with your life so everyone can see that you are moving forward. Give careful attention to your spiritual life and every Cherish truth you teach. For living what you preach will release salvation inside you and to all those who listen to you. You pick up on all those you should call them action verbs, instructions that we are to take up, to go after the word of God, to move forward, to be faithful in prayer. It's not just saying a prayer, but be faithful. Faithful in prayer. And I read that and I was asking God, I said, all right, what, what do we, where do we go from here? And he asked me, or instructed me to share a testimony about a fella I know that lived in Abilene. This guy was a young man. He was in all kinds of trouble. You name it, he did. He'd go to jail for a short time and get out. It increased, and it increased, and it increased. And he shot a man to kill him. He left. He turned around to come back to make sure he was dead. And the guy was gone. The guy wasn't there. Well, during this time, he was even sent off to the military to try to straighten him out. That even worked. This man had spent 26, years, 26 Thanksgivings and 25 Christmases with the Texas Department of the Judicial System, TDCJ. During that time, he was locked up. He decided to dive in see what the Word of God was all about. He chose that pathway. He realized all the effort and energy he was putting in to the world it landed him right there. What, 25 years since? We call it 25 flat. I mean, he served every bit of it. From the start to the end. Give 
began to learn, he began to pursue, he began to dive into. To me, he is a guy that has devoured the Word of God. I say that he has consumed it with so much faithfulness and so much gusto as he did in the world. That's who he is today. I didn't know this man before Jesus, but I got to know him through the Christian Motorcycle Association. I met him at one of our uh, January meetings to begin the year off. And we just kind of clicked. We just were close to the same age. And, and uh, we began to share, began to share with me what he was doing and how he was going about doing it. And he, trying to get on the facts of the line here. He has been recognized by the governor of Texas as having one of the top prison ministries in the state. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, now you see one read these scriptures. This is who this guy is. To be recognized by the state. When he goes in, you don't see, he's a small frame guy. He's about my height. He's real slender. <coughs> but his demeanor, when we go in to minister to those guys, I watch him. It's like, wow, this is a giant. Because of who he serves. God in him is so big and so real and so active that he grabs those men's attention for this testimony that blows them away. And there's several other men I, I've had the privilege to meet and call my friends, and that is awesome to see what God has done in their lives. He, uh, what's neat, he, he works. I'm not, I'm not, I didn't ask the person. He works at the dealership. I'll just say that. I'll give you the name. But the owner supports his ministry. When he needs to go, he's got his back. When he needs to go do things, he's got This guy is just, he's gone from the world looking down on him to a job in God's kingdom. And his boss man. He's make sure that he's able to do what he needs to do and go where he needs to go. I've had the privilege of working with his boss man and working together in this in Abilene and just doing things and it's it's awesome. It's really, really, really neat. And to further take you into this, I was at Audi Shop in Abilene several years ago. It was called the COC meeting. Federation of uh, chapters, I believe what it is. It's where all these different groups come together and they discuss the new Texas laws that just passed for the upcoming year, if, if there was any changes. And I was talking to another man that's affiliated with another Christian motorcycle group. This guy I've been telling you about his, his nickname is Clutch. Clutch comes up and talks to us. And he walks off. And this man tells me, that guy right there, he points a clutch. That is the only man I know that walks exactly what he talks. What a compliment. What a compliment. You know, at that time, I was like, wow. So, but to receive a compliment that that guy right there is the only man I know that walks what he talks. See, it's, uh, as we read in here, talking about verse 14, do not neglect the gift that is in you. He had a gift. He has a gift. Not past tense, he has. 
this is coming out of the New King James Version before I read that, which was given to you. God gives graciously. Each one of us have a gift. Tap into it. You know, that's what I like about this time of year. Happy Thanksgiving. All of us of A is in on it. The difference between someone in the world and one of us is we can speak from our heart, season with the Holy Spirit, let it fall on the ears and need to hear it. Amen. 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 Because in James it says there's life and death and the power of the tongue. You say, God, I need your Holy Spirit to season my speech when I speak to someone needs to hear. We won't pick up on that. You may not see it, but I dare you to try. Try. You've seen people come up here and sing from their heart. It's blessed you. You have the same gift when you say, Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas. You have that same opportunity to be a, a blessing to someone as just to someone up here singing that blessed you. Someone in here need to hear that tonight. Feel strong in that. I want to encourage you. Wow. Mm. I encourage you to pursue it with everything. It's like Timothy's writing about the Bible word, the Bible, that kindness and love that will fall on somebody. You know, our chapter had, had the opportunity to, to, to uh, provide two Thanksgiving meals last night. What a blessing. What we could have done 22. But we're small in numbers. We got to do two. We got to help with Christian Temple pass out meals on the 14th. That was awesome. That was a lot of fun. Uh, there's other folks, other places. One group, each one of the boys, they, they fed five families. I heard of in the community. That is so neat. Because when you look at somebody in the eye, and you speak to them, you handle something. Season with your love. Season with your heart. That's what you want to give. Boy, I didn't mean to do that to you. But that's the way God will honor you. That's the way God will bless you. That's the way you move forward with you. That's why this, this time of year is so awesome, so special. I want to read a couple of things. This, this is so awesome about this lesson. The first point was living with nothing to prove. That's just be who you are. That's all we're talking about. Be who you are. We're all unique. Be who God has created you to be because God has created you uniquely. And praise God, there's only one Billy Ray in this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get an email from you. Someone once said, they said, where am I? God made you an original. Don't die a copy. God has uniquely made you. There is nothing about you that is copied anywhere else. God has uniquely gifted you, talented you, and created you. Our responsibility to tap into that, to find out where we are in this kingdom. If you don't know pray, that have someone join with you in prayer. Ask guys the hell need to talk to. Them. That person may see that talent in you and they just haven't spoken over you at that time. And mentioned to you. Live with nothing to lose. We need to realize that no matter what age we are, yesterday is gone. There's nothing we can do about yesterday. We want to call it the past. Tomorrow is a new day. We have a fresh start for where our future will burn. We need to test things, try things, and do things. We're going to fail. Possibility. Of course we'll fail 
know some things. You see, we play a saying, you may never have any failures, but your successes will be few. Your successes will be few. Did you know that in 1980, I've got the proof somewhere on the card of my senior year in high school. I was asked to go to a fixed ring of an area FFA officer. And to speak on what I thought the future of agriculture would be. In 1980, I said that there would be a cotton stripper that would one day make a round up. <laughs> you know what the difference between me and a millionaire is? A millionaire ain't scared. In 1980, folks, it took them about 25 years to patent that. What a, I'll kind of give a little bit of information. It took a long time. So they, they, they researched it, they made one, it failed, it kept going, it failed. I mean, it's over and over and over. But in 1980, in about 1974, all the hard hands had all the ratchets and sockets, and I had a box in the wrench working on a cultivator. I thought, man, I don't think I can put a ratchet in this closed in box in the wrench. In 1974, what's one of the number one selling tools now? One of them ratchet box and wrenches. I can't talk about what I could have been. See what this author's trying to say in this devotional? You got to pursue things. Same way spiritually. If God asks you to do something, do it. He has a patent on everything. He's not going to lead you down a road full of boulders and thorns. It's going to be a narrow road. It might have a little ups and downs in it. But it ain't going to hurt you. It may work out a little bit. That never hurt nobody. You may survive, but you will thrive. And the last one's living with nothing to hide. Each one of us needs to live our lives as, a, as, a, as an example in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. We need to live in authenticity. Living with nothing to hide doesn't mean you don't make mistakes. It doesn't mean you won't mess up. It just means that you own those things and you take responsibility your actions. I remember that Sunday was here and one thing that just really blessed me when Brother James said it's Jesus Christ. I believe in the blood that shed on Calvary. That's the way it is. That's the only way to salvation. That blood washed your sins away, made you white as snow. Now we need more preachers preaching that. Amen. We need, we need more blood songs sang in church. You know, there's a lot of good songs out there, but man, when it comes to talking about the blood, I, I still love it. Higher in the blood, washed in the blood, you know, getting right down, I ain't going to sing. But I'll sure, I'll sure sit back here and come. <laughs> but they were brought for a reason. They were inspired for, for a reason for you and I. Jesus Christ went to the cross, took that final breath. And these guys, like we read here in Timothy, wrote instructions. They were given. 2 Timothy 3.16. I think it was that. I'm not sure. Y'all check the fact checkers check. Y'all may be wrong. It says, all scripture is the breath of God. It's useful. For teaching. Correcting. Uh, there's four four things there. But it's it's useful. It's inspired by God, by the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ went to the cross once and for all for each one of us to, to be partakers of what we just read in First Timothy chapter four. First in salvation, having him the Lord of our life, claiming that, and then get to enjoy the faith of the promise. 
Father, and the Word of God. What we want to do, what we want to see, we want to make place. So, folks, that's all I have for you tonight. Uh, so thankful for having a daily devotion to fall back on. And more importantly, the Spirit of God leading in the direction we need to be led. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to stand up here tonight and do this. So, well, the word said to be ready in season and out of season. <laughs> that's, that old, that's that old religious talk there. It is true because it is the word of God. <coughs> be ready. So you guys have a great Thanksgiving. You too. Journey on. I'll be traveling out in the morning sometime. Be safe. I'm playing on it. I'm going to sleep my get ready to get up. Then I'm going to do what I want to do, and I'll call you when I leave. Okay. <laughs> if I get you up too early, I might have to help assist while I'm playing your house. So, uh, oh, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> so, now they're going to take care of that. I just can't wait. Can I remember? I want to see what you said. Okay. All right. I'll give it to you. 242, 242. <laughs> but thank y'all so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. We'll, yeah, we'll circle, we'll circle up. Yeah. All right, y'all come on down and circle up for it. <laughs> Pursue it, God. May your Holy Spirit just visit them. Just in such a slow way. And just encourage them. We go about our way, Lord. Keep us all safe. Those that are traveling, Lord, and get us to our destination and, and return home safely in the days to follow, Lord. We just ask for safety on this interstate, all the interstates through this US of A, God. We just ask that everybody just experiences a heartfelt, warm Thanksgiving this year. Which in Jesus Christ we give thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.